Okay. All right, so we are ready to start. And this particular video is, um, we are reading the text of A Treatise on White Magic by Alice A. Bailey. This is our second meeting. So we have proceeded during the first one through up to page 10, man's three aspects. And uh, to, to just give a quick review of the first 10 pages, we saw the issue of duality being expressed, which really the short version is now you see us, now you don't, considering we incarnate and then we take an exit for a while and then we come back. Um, in fact, the book, Many Lives, Many Masters, I think was mentioned last week by Brian Weiss, which explains that quite well for anybody who wants to do a side trip of reading something else. Um, then we got to understanding that what's important here and what we do is create consciousness. When you get into the physics of consciousness, which is another book, it explains how we literally are conscious creating machines. That's our job here on this planet for the purposes of the planet. Um, so that's a matter of when you put spirit and matter together, you're gonna get consciousness out of it. Three, there is uh, understanding he dealt with the laws, the concept of the laws. And so really what that is design of the planet the planet's relations to other planets in our system. And we learn slowly as this evolves and we evolve with it. So um, there's just certain things you can and can't do within this structure, simply because the basic design we're in is such that um, we have limits also. And then the last portion of that was how we use our minds, we, um, we start looking at things theoretically that are thrown at us. We learn to discriminate. And as we evolve, we become more intuitive and start to be able to pick up some of what we consider our own ideas. We've, we've caught them and they're a little more advanced and that's how we evolve. That was a very short summary of the 10 pages we went through. Now we're dealing with man's three aspects. So um, before I go any further, I've got Tom down there and I really haven't met you before, Tom, other than by phone, I think, right? Only in voice, yes. So now you can yeah. put a face with the name and the, the voice <laughs> and I can yes. do the same. <laughs> That's right. It's been, it's been a while. <laughs> yes, it has. And you got, you certainly got a lot of action in that water behind you. I, yeah, I, uh, this is actually <laughs> a, a shot that my wife took. Um, her family has a nice, uh, they own a lot of farmland up in upstate New York, right on Lake Ontario. And they set up a really nice uh, family camp on the back end of one of their fields for the family. So there's Whoa. a bunch of cabins we built back there and it's extremely rustic, no electricity, no running water. You have to go to the bathroom. You have to use the outhouse. It's very serene and peaceful. And we love going up there as much as possible. That's why you've got so many short choppy waves is it's a lake and not the ocean. Lake Ontario. Yep. Very, very treacherous. It can be deceiving. It can be very, very calm and cool and glassy. And I go out there and paddleboard and 10 minutes later, the wind will pick up and it'll be pushing me in on a 10 foot wave. So. Oh my yeah. Gosh. Got to be careful. Dang. Sure. All right. So, uh, any questions about anything before we start this section? So you said we're on page page ten in the, and the introductory had, it, remarks. Uh, let me see if they classify that as. I believe so. Yeah, introductory. And I guess okay. see, I'm online with it, and online sometimes doesn't have the same. Page okay, hold on. Let me see, because I was going to say. 
we were actually, we went a little bit first. We went to page 18 last week, which so man's three aspects is on page 18 of the book. There we go. Okay. Got okay. It. It's on 10 on mine. Okay. Yeah. So the online is, that was very confusing trying to figure, find things in the book. At well, I'm glad I asked the question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is a download actually from uh, Lucius Trust and it's a very nice download, but the numbers yeah. are always different. So anyway, we're still at man's three aspects. Um, so one of the main means whereby man arrives at an understanding of that great sum total we call the macrocosm or God functioning through a solar system is by an understanding of himself and the Delphic injunction, man know thyself was an inspired utterance intended to give man the clue to the mystery of the deity. Um, but I'm going to stop there for a minute. I really doubt that one of those oracles at Delphi said that because they indicate that those oracles were actually breathing in some noxious gas that came from the inner source there. And that's what sent them out there. If so, they wouldn't be talking about man know thyself. <laughs> um, I mean, it's a, it's a wonderful statement, very important, but I just can't see one of those um, women being all gassed up with that, coming up with something that brilliant. Through the law of analogy or correspondences, the cosmic processes and the nature of the cosmic principle are indicated in the functions, structure, and characteristics of a human being. So, I mean, we are, what, what you will find in his material is, and even Annie Besant, we are a reflection of a reflection of a reflection. In other words, the chart. It's over on the note, it's in the chat for anybody to look at. Okay, the chart on page 117 of Cosmic Fire, which has the seven levels with the seven sub levels uh, if you started at the top, and Annie Besant covers this quite well in her study of consciousness, how you got the monadic at the very top, then the next level down is a reflection of that. And then that level you get in the next three levels, a reflection of that. And then we come down one more level and we get a reflection of it again, which is our lower three sections. So um, when they talk about the, the law of analogy or correspondences, the cosmic processes and the nature of the cosmic principles are indicated in the functions, the structure and the characteristics of a human being is in essence, it's finally gotten down to a point where it hit bottom, if you will. And we are the product that's moving up, back up the, the line now in as much as we have a degree of consciousness on the lower three levels that we certainly consider to be the top of the chain. You know, we've got animals below us and we've got plants and we've got mineral kingdoms. Um, so, and all we are is a reflection of reflection, working our way back up to the top. So when we talk about the law of analogy, you're gonna see it in this book over and over and over in all her work uh, or correspondences, the cosmic processes, the nature of the cosmic principle are indicated in the function, the structure and the characteristic of a human being. So we should be able to see all that within ourselves if we could see it. Uh, we are indicated, but not explained, or they are indicated, but not explained or elaborated. They simply serve as signposts directing man along the path whereupon the future signposts may be found and more definite indications noted. That is in short, what we call the evolutionary process, I think. The comprehension of that triplicity of spirit, soul, and body lies as yet beyond man's achievement. 
but an idea as to their relationship, their general coordinated function may be indicated by a consideration of man from the physical side and his objective functioning. There are three aspects of man's organisms which are symbols and symbols only of the three aspects of being. And of course, those three aspects of being you see at the top clearly elucidated in Annie Besant's uh, diagrams and descriptions make it really clear when you when you look at her little book study in consciousness um, what they are a symbol of of course she's still drawing a diagram so that's a symbol in itself even at the top the energy or the activating principle which withdraws mysteriously at death partially withdraws in the hours of sleep or of unconsciousness and which seem to use the brain as its main seat of activity and from there to direct the functioning of the organism. To produce the sensitive response which exists between the many organs and the part which form the organism as a whole and which serve also to make the man aware of and sensitive to his environment. This entire sensory apparatus is that which produces the organized awareness and coordinated sensitivity of the entire human being first within itself as a unit, secondly, its responsiveness and sensitive reaction to the world within which it plays its part. This nervous structure coordinating, correlating and producing an outer and an inner group activity demonstrates primarily through the three parts of the nervous system, the cerebrospinal system, sensory system of nerves and the peripheral system of nerves. And also for anybody who read um, twin dimensions, part of this was elaborated in that book in terms of we've got five senses. That's how anything gets to us is through our sense, you know, our ability to pick up information, interact with it. And then those five senses have five sub levels of development, uh, which you get some of in cosmic fire. Uh, it's elucidated. So um, that book just built out a little bit of an understanding of how we have used those senses to develop some of the more tangible things that we see as products is what he did in that book. Um, so those senses, it's closely associated with the energy aspect. Now, to define energy versus forces, the energy comes from above on that chart on 117. The lower three levels, we function on forces. In other words, you've got to eat to get the energy to turn it into the forces which keep you motivated and alive and awake and aware. Um, if you had moved up that chart, then you would be getting direct sources of energy in those upper levels uh, that hasn't had to be stepped down in order for you to function. So when you see the word forces, you know you're working on the lower three planes and energy is the planes above that is what the source is then. It doesn't have to be stepped down. Uh, any questions on that? Okay, um, so those systems are closely associated with the energy aspect being the apparatus utilized by that energy to vitalize the body, to produce its coordinated activity and functioning, and to bring about an intelligent rapport with the world in which it has to play a part. It lies back, if one might use such an expression, of the body nature proper, back of the mass of the flesh, the bone and the muscle in its turn is motivated by and controlled by two factors. The sum total of the energy, which is the individual quota of vital energy, 
the energy of the environment in which the individual finds himself and with, in which he has to function and play his part. This coordinating nervous system, this network of interrelating and sensitive nerves is the symbol in the man of the soul and an outer and visible form of an inner spiritual reality. There is finally what might be described as the body, the sum total of the flesh, the muscle, and the bone, which the man carries around, correlated by the nervous system and energized by what we vaguely call his life. In these three, the life, the nervous system, and the body mass we find the reflection and the symbol of the greater whole. And by a close study of these and a comprehension of their functions and group relation, we can arrive at an understanding of some of the laws and principles which direct the activities of God in nature, a phrase sublimely true and equally finitely false. The three aspects of divinity, the central energy or spirit, the coordinating force or the soul and that which these two use and unify are in reality one vital principle manifesting in diversity. These are the three in one, the one in three, God in nature and nature itself in God. Carrying the concept for the sake of illustration into other realms of thought, this trinity of aspects can be seen functioning in the religious world as the esoteric teachings, the fundamental symbology and the doctrines of the great world religions and the exoteric organizations. In government, it is the sum total of the will of the people, whatever that will may be. The formulated laws and the exoteric administration in education, it is the will to learn, the arts and sciences, and the great exoteric outer presentation of the teachings. Wait, I missed a sentence there, didn't I? The exoteric educational systems. In philosophy, it's the urge to wisdom, the interrelated schools of thought, and the outer presentation of the teachings. And I think in um, Buck's book, Cosmic Consciousness, he indicates that basically most of the teachings that we have and the education we've taught has come from these people down historical lines who have had some degree of that exposure and that epiphany of that cosmic consciousness. I don't know, did anybody else see that line in that book? Probably not. Not that I remember her off the top of my head. Okay, because I thought Bull read that book too. Yeah. So. I haven't read it yet. Yeah, uh, the twin dimension. And then Pardon? um cosmic consciousness. No, you, you yeah, you read. I was gonna say Bull, you read it. I saw it, I saw it at your house. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that was the book I was talking about, cosmic consciousness. Mm -hmm. But he does make a remark there. It's just a sentence that he says that all of what gets taught to most of humanity has come from the people who have had that experience. And sure, and so that's, that's easy to see, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and, and I think he's substantiating that here, too. Just a lot of times one sentence in this book can be represented by the whole book. In, in some other um, piece of workings. That's generally why I suggest in certain books make it easier to understand this because it's, it's just like um, Twin Dimensions Inventing Time and Space. There'll be a sentence in here that implies everything that's in that book. But you don't even know that if, if you haven't had some exposure to that kind of that material because it it's implied in this one, you're not learning it in school because they're not teaching it. Probably don't even know enough to teach it yet. Um, so anyway. No, they're too busy worrying about 
making kids memorized. You know. Common core math. Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Well, yeah, I guess you've had a recent experience with that, right? Your wife? Yeah. She, oh, I don't, I don't, I didn't tell Bull, but I think Tom knows because I might have been texting back and forth with him at the time. Yeah, I know she left, but you didn't tell me why. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she walked into the classroom, her classroom that for Bull. Kim got a job uh, for uh, as a science teacher. Uh, and then she went to school on Monday morning and I guess all of the, the entire astral plane came running at her and the, uh, the, the flood came down the hallway of the school and she said, nope, I'm out of here. I can't do it. I want I'm I, being a lunch lady is way better than this. And I'm out. And she called her boss before she left and she had her other job lined back up and she went back to being a lunch lady. <laughs> Nice. This would be a great TikTok video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I could just see all the teachers calling HR trying to transfer over to being a you know cafeteria lady. <laughs> like, what happened to Kim? Oh, she went back to being a lunch. Like, damn it. She was only here a day. I knew that was a better <laughs> job. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah. I was surprised, Carla, that there was no transit or anything happening. So maybe that it just wasn't, you know, it's a real event or anything, you know? Right. Yeah. yeah I mean, she hadn't even trans technically transferred over yet, had she? No. And she didn't. Yeah. There was no transit happening. It was just kind of. Uh, no, but she had she had not formally no. transferred over no. yet. So, no. you know, it was like a non-event. It was like I got into the wrong yeah. room morning. Emotional, and yeah, yeah. Found it's, out. Well, yeah, that she I'm got very. Yeah, it was like, hey, I'm gonna go be a teacher today. Oh, just kidding. I'm gonna go back to being a lunch lady. Right. <laughs> yeah. When you go to college and you fly, you find out ten minutes into the class you're in the wrong classroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not supposed to be here. I gotta go. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? I gotta go. I don't know. I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. No, no, oh. I asked the question. Uh, so, if we go on, thus the eternal triplicity runs through every department of the manifested world, whether viewed as that which is tangible, or as that which is sensitive and coherent, or that which is energizing. And what you're going to find in his works is when he deals with the triplicity, and he almost always does there's almost always three parts to it and it is going to one is going to deal with the physical one is going to deal with the emotional one is going to deal with the mental it's going to deal with those lower three planes on that chart of seven uh so like i said when you start to read it and you see these three you can tag them right to the mental the emotional and the physical they're related in some way every time he comes up with a three-part uh, scenario. It is that intelligent activity which has been clumsily called awareness. It is the capacity of awareness itself involving as it does sensitive response to the environment and the apparatus of that response. The divinity, duality of the soul, it is finally the sum total of that which is contacted and known. It is that of which the sensitive apparatus becomes aware. This, as we shall see later, is a gradually growing realization and a shifting ever into more esoteric and inner realms. And that is a very important sentence. And actually, Donnie can probably talk to that a little bit. What would you like to talk about? The last sentence. We shall see it as a gradually growing realization, shifting ever into more esoteric and inner realms. In other words, you start at the bottom, but you do weigh your work, work your way up, and eventually you can kind of see that that's right. happening. Yeah, you can witness it. I think you, if you're paying close enough, if you're aware of what's happening, and you understand the material at the even just a little bit from that chart and all. If you really let it sink in, you can start to watch where and where you might where you're probably at if you're being realistic with yourself. 
And then you can kind of look at it all in the process and step aside and see how this has taken place. And it's, it's just so slow and it's just so gradual. It's just so gradual. I don't know. That's, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, and, and then the more, you know, you know, literally, I don't really feel like I need to say anything anymore because the more, you know, the more you know, the less that you know, right? And then it's like, well, I just, I just need to shut this thing off. But then you read this, and this is, there, there's a lot, this feels good to read. It does not feel good to read it, but but this actually has some structure to it to, to, keep, my, to keep my framework together as I'm not knowing anything, I think. Does that make sense? It does to me. I don't know. How about you guys? Can you understand what you just said? It kind of made sense to me. It's holding me together right now, right? <laughs> like this is holding me together. Well, uh, the, the two of you guys who've known him a lot longer, I mean, you know what he's been most of his life, right? Yeah, <laughs> I like the new Donnie. I like the old Donnie too, but I like this one better. Well, we were all at the different phases in our life. I would say that, right? We were but, all kind know. of at the same spot. <laughs> I think all three of us were different at those yeah, points in our lives. 100%. So I think I get it because it's like the gradual evolution of us as individuals and man, but like interconnectedness together. And I just, I mean, I'm the resident newcomer here, I think. But as I dive, if I, as I've been diving deeper into this with Donnie, it's like, I, at points I'm like, well, I, I think I might've been doing this a lot longer than I think I have been because, and just not really realizing what's been going on. So, so it's kind of neat to see the evolution over time and it is very gradual and I'll say it hasn't been consistent either. Cause there's days where I'm just like, what the F is going on and I can't figure anything out, but then there's days where everything is just clear as day and I just go on and everything's great. But The, the breeze that morning has secrets to tell you, right? Don't go back to sleep. So it seems right, like that, exactly. you know, like every day you get a, a little bit, just a little bit. If you're aware, if you're not yeah. aware, you're host. You, you know, it might all come crashing in at one time, but if you're paying attention every day, day by day, you can see the very gradual changes. Yeah. Also, seems like that anyway. I'm blown away by how emotion starts to disappear. That is mm -hmm. really wild to me. And I don't mean disappear. I, I, I mean, to look at things that would have normally triggered me years ago, and then even just probably a few years ago. And then now, there- How about a have, few months ago? Yeah, you, well, <laughs> yeah, I would have to really think about that. But especially in these last few months, I can see that the energy or something, if I can say that in my heart, and this is just my interpretation of this right now from very silly interpretation, probably. It just become, you just become much more constant. It's just, a, I don't know. There's just an awareness that doesn't go to and fro flying off. There's not really the emotion there that doesn't cause your mind to go swaying. You just stay very steady. I mean, if you do let it take you, it doesn't last as long as it might have used to, right? No, yeah, no. Yeah, they like say I, if I, something lasts for more than 15 minutes, that's an issue that you need to work out. Right. But these are just, you just don't even, the issues don't even come up. But the interesting part is to see where we're kind of at and then see where the people ahead of us are at because you start to see the, in my mind, I start to see the thoughts fade off and there's no need to think as much anymore. But I know, I know that that's not what, what's happening because the mind has not fallen off or whatever you want to call it. However, you know, I still think, but I know from studying that at some point that's not even necessary anymore. Right, Carla? You're just, Eventually, but that's a ways down the line yeah. that you click over to that level. But um, one of the terms that's used when you're moving from the astral plane to the mental is kama manasic. In other words, 
it's a combination of energy and early thoughts, lower mental thoughts. And when I say earlier, I'm talking about you got a seven level um, plane for the mental plane. So when when you're first coming out of just totally that emotional driven life to and and mankind's been there for a while when he's coming out he's connecting to, to his mental but it's but it's a combination comma and monastic so your it's emotions that then drive your thoughts if you will early on so what you're really talking about is just now the reverse it's not the emotional driven that drives you to that thought that you know you're probably thinking more clearer thoughts without the emotional driver that had to trigger you so you know you don't you don't get it maybe doesn't last longer than 15 minutes because there's no emotion driving or yeah the real emotional driving and the triggers i mean i remember when i first met you and i remember when the little green telephone over here <laughs> was talking about i don't remember that hardly now oh, probably don't but no. but uh some of the comments were you know that you were always charged up and always everywhere you went you were just kind of nervous because you were always being concerned about this that 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 all of this was going on and there was no calm there it was just a little bit of a hair trigger probably just sitting waiting to be triggered and you were concerned about a lot of stuff you probably had a lot of irons in the fire but not not um, being able to deal with all of it at one time. So yeah, I was very confused for a couple of years. You know, it was confusing. Yeah. I think I was really didn't know what the heck was going on with my life and why it was being like a tornado came through. You know, so it was intense. And Donnie, that was kind of, you know, kind of back to what you're saying, like, it, with all the, you know, stuff or the emotions or whatever, it was, uh, I just thought that since we had all been there, done that, million deployments, all this other things, we were just desensitized to life at that point, you know, because like, okay, I'm coming back, nothing in civilian life is going to be as, as gnarly or, you know, crazy as, you know, stuff that we've seen or done or whatever. But right. then when all of our other dudes stayed like in that that like emotional state and stuff like that and got like really super aggravated to you know things just like oh man and um i i couldn't really put my finger on it at that point I'm like well i guess i guess i was wrong in that stuff and then right right and i met with carla and you know we you know like went through the reading everything else like that start you know you know she gave me some things to read then i'm like oh cool maybe you know it's it's something else that's that's why at that point like i reached out to you i'm like dude you and carla need to talk because yeah uh, she because <laughs> you're you yeah. have all these energies going you know freaking crazy and like you're you know freaking blowing just just crazy amounts of energy everywhere and yeah. like you need to get back get a new uh a new heading Dude, on your at that time uh, i felt like if i stomped on the ground the whole earth would shatter in front of me and raise up and it was it was a really intense couple of years yeah. there you know yeah and, we, and you and i were reading about the same material right we ordered this we ordered uh, yeah, the same absolutely. within the day of each other i think so that was really yeah. intense and that and do, that was the hardest time of my life was when bo and i actually probably came together that was one of the mm -hmm. hardest i was most confused but i was also coming out i, I guess i was on the up uh, i was getting more confident but i was still very confused about listening to the world and everything just sounded like lies from every angle i don't know it's just the craziest like i just wanted to pull my hair out and then like start smashing and then running away <laughs> and then, you know, med I was trying to meditate at the time and then I was trying drugs or whatever came along to get things right, you know. But the energy was off the chart at that. That's when I had the thing show up my forehead, Carla, you know, like I'm, I was like, dude, I thought I was going to burst in the flames for a while.
<laughs> you know, but no, now it's, you know, I'm very chill. I, you ain't getting me excited like that ever again. I don't think, I don't know. At least come, you have to zap me with something. <laughs> hmm, that's cool. Yeah. Well, so no, I, I, Carl, back to what you were saying to ask me to say something, it, it's so gradual, but I think you can see it. And if you're paying attention to it, which is very difficult for a lot of us to do when we have the jobs and the days that we have, but, but, you know, you don't have to spend five years like I did reading everything to get to this book, right? <laughs> I spent, I, uh, and I did, I spent a lot of that time finding the material that I needed, I think. And then now that, you know, you can, you can watch it. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful event. It's also very weird but it's, it's beautiful yeah. well you know um when when i got the referral to to bull actually somebody gifted bull with his chart reading okay and i i knew that individual for probably 30 years prior to um because he used to date my daughter and he said to me he said, um, I think that this will be really good. He was talking about for Bull at that point in time. Um, and probably Craig knew what he was talking about because I think it has spun through because then I believe um, Bull gifted you with a reading, I think is the way it happened. But he understood Craig understood what you guys had been through you know he'd known me for like I said 30 years he knew what that ch astrology chart reading could could do and that's why he he wanted Bull to have one because he figured that was gonna have an impact there and I think it does I mean I when I look at you guys and most of the people that probably going to show up as far as company on this set of of um, videos has had their astrology chart reading it gives you your life back you know you and uh, I think one of the things bullet said was he when he came back it was like well the best years of our lives are gone now they're handing us a bunch of medication to take for the rest of our life and we're put out to pasture and you find out very quickly that's not the case yeah it was uh it, I mean, it was definitely a change in just everything you know like whole mentality like how i would view something how i how i would interpret it and then you know you know instead of being just a big clinch fist walking around all the time it's like oh man i can relax because you know, this, there's, there's, uh, there's a, you know, there's a rhyme to the reason there, you know, like everything is set the way it is for, you know, for me to learn whatever I have to learn on, on this, on this trip, you know? Um, and that, that took a lot of the, you know, just being hyper vigilant, you know, 24 Dude, hours. Listen, bro, just, listen, listen to this though. I'm sorry to cut you off. You be you learned how to calm yourself down under fire, bro. Like, yeah. so you could have a normal conversation, like talking to us right now, while there's bullets flying all around you, sir. You did. You got a lot of growth <laughs> out of the way. Okay, like that's pretty intense. <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's crazy. But I'm 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 talking about like on the you know after we're home and we're back in, you know, like the yeah. world and stuff like that, it's, uh, you know, I, 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 I hate leaving the house. I hated going, you know, places, all this other stuff. I didn't know, you know, I mean, there's 10 million things going on trying to find a job, which job I wanted. It was this one going to last all these other kind of things, um, stuff with the family, like, you know, pretty much everything. Uh, but it, it all would hit just with so much intensity all you know simultaneously all the time you know couldn't sleep you know wasn't really you know just 
you're just there just waiting for something bad to happen but then you're like oh wait no i mean i got my chart now so i'm good until this date when i gotta start <laughs> kind of tighten it up or you know so it's uh well, they've got our alkalinity and our chemicals and our bodies all jacked up too. You know, there's all sorts of yeah. crazy stuff going on there. Well, it's all it's all very freeing, you know. Um, you know, like mentally to where you can just get out and you know, you know, you know, like basically live your life without just worrying about everything every single second of the day. So, and that you know, since you're not in that that state of mind continually. Um, you can, you know, plan things and you can do, you know, like you can basically get your life back, like uh, Carla was saying. So, yeah, it's, uh, I think everybody needs to have one. So, I mean, yeah, especially, you know, you know, guys like us that come back or whatever, just to, just to get back on the, on the road that we should have been on, you know? Yeah. Like I could see Carla doing a whole, uh, our whole unit. You know. Oh, dude, for sure. No, man, if I was, you know, you know, if I was king for the day, I would make that part of everybody's out processing checklist when they were, you know, going to separate from the military. It's like, all right, yeah, give uh, Carla a call, get your stuff, and then, uh, and then, you know, come back and tell me how amazing it was, and then, um, and then go, go freaking order uh, cosmic consciousness and, uh, you know, read right. and white magic, and then freaking have a good time. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh man, yeah. call me in a couple months. Yeah. And Bill, one of the things that I think you were specifically talking about when we're talking about doing your chart, and a lot of people don't really understand all the information that is there in, I mean, let's put it this way. You're, when you're born, you're born with a manual. <laughs> you just don't know <laughs> it. In other words, the yeah. personality profile that you're going to work through is defined there. And then not only that, but you've got what we call the transits, which are the event patterns that are coming into your world. And one of the things that I remember when we did your chart is you were looking for a job. And yep. so this was a search, search. <gasps> Where am I going to yeah. find it? Okay. But there was a specific date set there and it was very clear. I said, no, until, you, until this point, this is when this is going to happen. And yeah. I remember you saying that was that was part of where your comfort level was because you could spend the weekend with your son instead yep. of having to chase through the whole weekend plus next week and et cetera, et cetera, to try to find a job because you and you did find it on that day. Yeah, um, I, I and, at that time. You and, and you had choices. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You became aware that you had choices in terms of, and it wasn't just a matter of plowing through everything, but the opportunities were going to come to you. Yeah. Which I believe they did. They did. Yeah. I, I had texted you on that day. I said, Oh, Hey, guess what? Um, I said that, that job, it dropped. And then you're like, you're like, Oh yeah, I know. I'm like, no, oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't, but yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah, it takes a couple of years for somebody to realize they really uh, have a playbook that was designed yeah. for them and for the success of their life and for whatever purpose this incarnation. It all comes packaged for you, um, but it's just not been brought to the awareness of the general public. I mean, I remember the 60s, that's when astrology came up again. I used to call it cocktail astrology. It was just very comfortable. Oh, what sign are you? Oh, well, I'm such <laughs> and such, you know, and you're, you're just looking for a pickup line and that's what it was. But all of the rest of the information there was never pursued in those days because it was just surface stuff. But it's there, you know, everybody, uh, it proves you've been logged in. Let's put it that way. You've been logged on and you're here and you've got a plan and a purpose. Cool. And that and, gives and I think you a lot the, of comfort. Guys, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, for the military guys, as soon as, you know, you're done, you can just, you know, like you're sitting around there. I mean, like out processing outside of the military and it's a very impersonal process. There's like, cool, you're signed up. All right cool man thanks uh 
see you later. And you're like, huh? And then you just kind of walk off base and, you know, drive home, whatever. And then you're just kind of there. And then uh, you're like, wow, I don't really have a, I don't really have a purpose anymore. What am I supposed to do? So in that, that, uh, that kind of just, I, I think, you know, gets that all, all that churn going and then um, not really having a, a clear direction of, you know, like what you're supposed to be doing or, you know, or like, a balanced you know, like what... direction, dude, because it seemed, I feel like people who get out jump to the next thing in a panic too quick and they don't take any yep. time for themselves to decompress after 20 years of basically brainwashing and freaking toxic relationships yep. and work environment. Yep. <laughs> and come on. Yeah, anybody in the military could just be like, this is a toxic work environment. Every single person in the military oh, could say that. This is harmful for your mental health right here. I can tell you that after <laughs> just doing sex. <laughs> <laughs> I only did six yeah. and I didn't even well, deploy. Yeah, day one. I didn't even deploy into combat and it sucked. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but boy, we awesome. had a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, probably I, too much. Yeah. <laughs> No. Mm -mm. no carla would not she would just laugh if she knew she might laugh at us i was carla i was put in korea in the middle of the night i was shoved in a body bag duct taped and poured alcohol down my face and then they they br were bringing me somewhere outside uh, i don't know if they're going to actually try to bury me somewhere but they dropped me on my freaking head and that had they had to call it off at that point, but uh, but yeah, that's how our that's basically how I mean. You're just a number. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty intense. These guys are very yeah. intense people, you know, intense crew. Uh, yeah, but then I remember somebody who who um, started into this this spiritual trip and before i knew you because you were working with the rosicrucian material and um had gone down and had a, a very nice easter group i think it was around easter um that turned out to be quite enlightening for you from my viewpoint um looking from the inside out i don't know if you really understood that you were just on a trip that was beautiful at that point in time and um yeah. those are very hard to see until you come off because they're exactly the description that you get in cosmic consciousness it comes on you and it's only there for a short period of time and uh, of course you think you're going to be there forever at that state at that point and then it goes away and then <laughs> You really think you've arrived uh, after you realize kind of what's happening. And, oh, this has got to go fast. Oh, this yeah, no, <laughs> this is a hard. Uh, that was probably one of the hardest parts about this whole thing, honestly, is learning that so, you just stepped into the, to the room. You're not even in the room yet. You didn't even get into the thing yet. That's hard to digest, uh, especially... From a you know, maybe not for everybody else, but specifically from a Christian uh, type of background with any sort of basic Christian understanding, you know, you're saved. Once you're saved, you, you don't have to do anything anymore. You're just done. And then you just in la la land and, you know, uh, just serve everybody and walk on water and everything's, you know, you're going to do greater things than him. And uh, I and the father are one. And then it's we're done now. That is that is a dangerous uh, teaching because uh, that's not how it goes. Well, yeah. and you know, in this, when all of the Eastern religions came over here in the sixties, um, it was the same thing. You were going to get to the Nirvana and then you were just going to be there. Uh, in other words, they just figured, okay, well, when you get to the state of Nirvana, then you're just going to be in that state for the rest of your life that you're here on a physical plane um and that you've arrived and there's nothing left to do which is not accurate either you can you can take those increments of development and they're described in cosmic consciousness i think quite accurately 
there's an impact, you experience this, and then it will fade away because you need to ground it back in. But you didn't lose any of the connections that you ever developed earlier in your life. Right. Tom and I were talking about this not too long ago, right? That was an yeah. issue that comes up. That's a concern for all of us. Yeah. And you, and you learn to gravitate and resonate to whatever level your environment is. So you're going to move up and down. If you couldn't, you'd have nirvana. You'd be up there and you wouldn't be able to relate to anybody down here. You know, I mean, it, that would be what would happen. But you learn to play the whole scale from top to bottom is, is really what happens. And so um, if you come into the environment with a five-year-old, you're going to move to the range where that five-year-old is another just and and have a conversation and interact and be able to it's very similar to the when i was young they used to show how you would create a sound and you'd have a glass over here and if you hit the right one it would shatter the glass because mm -hmm. it resonated to a level of impacting well you go up and down as a human being through all of the planes and experiences and be able to resonate with everything you've experienced to that point in time. But you don't go up there and just stay there. Okay. Um, hanging in here, that's not what you're here physically to do anyway in an incarnation. You're here for, for as much development as, as you can do or whatever is programmed. The soul determines um, there's a need for the incarnation and then there are what they call four lords of karma who decide where you're going to land and what needs to be the next. Hold on, Carla, we're kind of losing you a little next bit. Karma right have the perspective from the viewpoint of what the, that soul needs and what the planet needs. I mean, we're here as planetary issue. We're here for a purpose to benefit this planet. And it's not just to clean up the garbage that's been thrown around. It's our development. I think the end all, or one of the things he makes statement in one of his other books is your long-term objective is to become a clear, conscious cell or description as such in the planet you know, of, in other words, when you've made it to the top, if you will, you would be a clear, fully conscious unit in this planet. But you are planetary issue for this planet. In other words, you weren't born on Mars. Okay. We already know our uniqueness is relative to being on this planet because when they go in outer space, their eyeballs change shape. The DNA changes. So we are, we're here to serve this planet and be a unique part of it. And it's a long journey and we get a lot of shots at it. <laughs> it isn't just one time and if you don't make it. Um, and I don't think it ever initially was, but that's the way it was interpreted in order to establish a church. And listen, they've lasted 2,000 years. Um, there's no other corporation that's lasted that long. And they just basically, from my viewpoint, their purpose was to preserve some of the teachings of Christ and the words he said. And that's been managed to be done for 2,000 years. So otherwise, it's humanity and human foibles have directed it in a lot of directions that um, are not necessarily functional. But now we have material like this and everything here is, I mean, you can listen to it. You like it, fine. If you don't, go read something else because nobody's pushing this on you. Well, that's the important part. I think that DK mentions in the introduction that we talked about last week, especially for new people coming in who say, well, this is just like cult material. 
this is cultish. What are you going to go do? Start a cult? There's a lot of people like that, you know, that have that, you know, they don't want to sway too far out of their, you know, it's like a, it's like a protection, you know, defense mechanism that they have, or they don't want to sway too far out. They won't even read stuff like this a lot of times because it says magic or something. But the, but the words in there that DK says about, you know, this is not dogmatic. Don't listen to me. Don't trust me. Don't listen to anybody. That's, that's truth there. I mean, don't, you know, that's, take it if it, if it resonates, if it, you know, if you can synthesize, if it synthesizes, great. And if it doesn't, do what thou wilt. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just like the astrology chart. It's yours. You don't have to list, you don't have to believe any of it. Okay. But it is designed for you, and the transits are designed for you, not for somebody else. And you're going to do with them what you will. It's your choice how you you greet the energy that comes to meet you at various times. I ask people now, you know, hey, have, you know, what's your chart look like right now? You know, when's your next transit? And they're like, oh, I don't know. I didn't. I haven't looked. And I'm, and I say, well, and that. But some of them, some of my friends, just be like. I, I don't even want to know what's coming. I don't even want to know. You know, so there's Oh, yeah, there's, there's people like that, too. for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but I, and I mean, I've always figured, hey, if you want to blow through this one blind, that's fine. Maybe you need that, you know. And for somebody else that wants to have a little bit of a clue, it, it generally gives a little cushion. Because even if it's something that you've got to make adjustments in your life to or something, you know the event is coming. So when it comes, because it's going to come, whether you believe it or not, whether you know about it or not, doesn't matter. But it can be just a little cushion. Ah, here's what this is. And, and you know, now I'm going to have to make a little transition here or there because something new is coming in that I need to figure out how to incorporate or to work with. And um, so, yeah, it just eases it up because you're going to get it either way. Well, I think it's definitely part of knowing yourself initially anyway, if it, right? Yeah. But not much happens in your life that there isn't a transit set for. We think that we're just running around and we're interacting with everything and it comes to us and, and that a lot of this could be accident or this or that. It's not the case. It's sometimes people will um, have a comparison done between two charts to see how well they'll get along. It's, it's kind of a good thing if you're going to marry somebody, you have a clue. Uh, well, hell, come on, Carl. Baby. We missed the boat on that one. We're all got, I'm, I've got, I'm, I mean, this is my, was my third marriage. I didn't, I needed to know this stuff. I need okay. to know this much earlier next go. Right. <laughs> but, but anyway, um, let's see. I started off with, where did I start off with this one? Because I was thinking of a particular point on uh, the comparisons. And I, I went into your train of thought. Um, but anyway, well, I'll have to pick that one up when I think about it again. But uh, your three marriages are, are. Uh, well, we're in the we're all Pluto and Libra, and that appears to be our primary mission, or one of them. Side missions is rearranging relationships. Right? Well, that that might be something, but you've also got a lot of basic planets in Libra too. So, I mean, you're running around connecting with people all the time. Oh, I, oh, in particular, yeah. Oh, all yeah. of us or, yeah. Okay. No, you. Mm. Yeah, not right, only. Right, you, okay, you, I see what you're saying there, yeah. Makes yeah, sense. you're, you're, um, you've been dipped deep in that bucket. So yeah. then probably you can't miss the transformation of your Pluto and Libra, if you will. Okay. Where, <laughs> because it's, you got a bunch of other planets in Libra, so. It's probably something you really needed to, to learn. So they figured, well, we'll shove all this at you and you can't miss the boat. Okay. Yeah, that makes <laughs> sense. 
Just right under the bus. Here's the okay. bus cover. Here's the train tracks, dude. We're tying you up right here. Right. Yeah. yeah anyway. and, then, and then Metallica wrote a song about it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, sorry about that. That's funny. No, no, no. That's it. But it's. But it is. No, I love this material because DK says that in the introduction of almost every book. Don't listen to me unless it, unless it's making sense. You know, unless it's resonating. And we are all, I think all of us right now, are gen we're very skeptical of everything. We, at the same time, probably believe everything and don't believe everything all at the same time right now, kind of. Yeah. yeah well, That's a see, very right? strange, that's not healthy like that, right? So this material yeah. is good because he says, well, just disregard everything else if it if it resonates, it resonates, right? And nobody wants to go to church. Nobody wants to do any of that stuff because nobody knows what is right anymore at all. They're just we're just doing stuff. It seems like. Well, we're we're shifting an age. We're going from the Piscean age to the Aquarian age. We're starters. So uh, the energy that built the last two thousand years is leaving. It's slipping away, if you will, on its own. And the new energy for the new age, the Aquarian age, is starting to come in and fill in some blanks, but it makes very little sense because you, you don't have enough of it to get a picture yet. So you've got yeah. to pursue your own truth. Yeah, it's seeking your, it's probably driving you to have to find your own truth. Yeah, so. that's interesting. Yeah, it's like this is pretty hardcore stuff, though. I mean, as far as Bull and Tom and I go, you have, in my opinion, you you have to be pretty tough mentally to handle some of this. If, if you're looking at it, looking at from where I'm at, you have to be tough to handle this material. Mm -hmm. This is going to rearrange your whole thing. It's gonna it's gonna upside. You're gonna flip your life upside down. Right. You know, you got to be tough, I think. This well, is yeah. No, this is not for the weak. You know. And it takes a lot just to. And the military guys, if you think you're tough, here's <laughs> the thing. If you guys think you're tough, come on, sit down and talk with Carla and Tom and Bull. All right. <laughs> Don't. If you think you're tough, dude, come on, sit down with Carla and let's see how tough you are. <laughs> It's true. Have you crying in about 10 minutes, you know, or not, or on the track, one or the other. Right? So this is good stuff. No, I think we're, we're, we need to get as many people as we can, our buddies at least exposed. I'm just going to be everybody's strange friend from now on. I mean, I know that's what I've been. It's in my chart probably to be that, but I'm just going to keep doing it. And Bull's definitely everybody's strange friend. Tom's everybody's <laughs> strange boss. Because <laughs> he runs the Census Bureau, you know. And they don't even know it. And we're his only friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running that place and they don't even know it. It's <laughs> the best way. It's like Obama. All right, Carla, do you want to shut this off? You want to finish some closing statements for... This Where go are, uh, this, about an hour or so, and then we'll, yeah, uh, we'll come and then back. I'll just restart it. I'll just restart the uh, recording. Sure, because the, we, we I think we probably read at least 20 sentences. Yeah, that was really good. That was, we got real far <laughs> on that one. Which is fine. That's what happened. A lot of good discussion. Material. Yeah. It, it happened the same way with my mentor 50 years ago when I, I, started reading in fact this was the book she used and um we would meet if you can believe that there's a group who met for two years every saturday night that's how engaged that group was that they would take their saturday night and they everybody went to her house she had enough room for all of us and we would read this and you only get a few pages here and a few pages there you know and a lot of discussion 
And uh, she was wonderful because she had a great background in this material. She knew it backwards, forwards, inside and out. Um, but anyway, so yes, we can wind this one up uh, <laughs> that we managed to get probably. How was the um, energy in that place? Yeah, and it was the times. The 60s, you could never reproduce those. They were just unique. And I think what really occurred in essence was that you had a descent of the Christ consciousness came down as far as the astral plane, the emotional plane. Okay. Uh, because everybody was talking about Christ. I mean, I had a good friend of mine, he and his brother were arguing about which one was the reincarnation of Christ. Mm. Okay. And then you had, but the world couldn't handle that kind of energy in terms of application of any growth like this material. So the song, if you're not with the one you love, you love the one you're with, was absolutely how that energy was used. Came down to the astral plane, we're gonna love somebody. So, I mean, if, if, if it ain't you, it's gonna be you tonight, <laughs> kind of thing. It, it was- um, It's like a big, long, pleasant transit. Yes. Well, and then you did have George Harrison and a few other little movie stars went to the East, sat with the Maharishi. He's making his song, Fool on the Hill. Um, and then some of that comes over here. Um, Transcendental Meditation came with it. The, uh, they actually had a TV channel. They had a lot of things that, that clicked for a while and then it lost it. And astrology came in, but again, like I said, very surface, just cocktail astrology, a nice book on the cocktail table. and and a conversation piece. And a lot of times just to start a conversation or to pick up somebody and, uh, or unload somebody maybe too. Uh, so anyway, the, um, yeah, it, it was a unique time. You could not replace it because there was actually that descent and with it came the music, the Beatles and a, a lot of good music and then as you move through the decades, you change the drugs and then you change the music. So pretty soon you had acid rock and, and uh, heavy metal. Oh, and now we got crack. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I mean, it's, but crack. it's interesting to have be able to look at it because you really could not re reproduce those times at all. They were, certain energy coming in, but it changed social structures and it broke down barriers because there was a lot of stratification of, of right and wrong, money and no money and et cetera, et cetera. Um, not that you still don't have the differences, but there's, there just wasn't breaking barriers that you weren't interacting um, across any stream like you were afterwards. So. But is that, was that the whole, so the whole, no, not, not everybody, I shall ask you this another time, probably anyway. I was, I'm thinking about the Leo, the Pluto and Leo generation. That was all them, right? That went through the 60s? Well, they were born in, um, probably starting in 40s, 43 at the latest and went, went probably 20 years, the generation had to be at least 20 years long. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Wonder. but what's happened, if you want to look at it from that viewpoint is you have, Pluto has an elliptic orbit. So these signs are probably 20 year sections. When it hits the turn, it goes down to 12 years. So right now we have two signs, Pluto, Pluto and Leo, both, and Pluto and Scorpio, who are at odds. And normally we don't have those cultural generations born and existing at the same time, but you do right now. So you're seeing some very strong battles between the old folks 
including me, and those guys who are in their mid thirties or something who just hate what the old folks stand for because they're not bending down, they're not capitulating and they're not dying fast enough probably for them. Um, so, so there's a real polarity there that you normally do not get culturally because the outer three planets move so slow, large groups of people over a period of years have the same general themes for generational themes. And um, generally they're not at odds because those planets move so slow, you aren't even gonna get a 90 degree angle um, in a time frame that, that keeps them all alive at a 90 degree angle. So it, we just happen to be in one of those. But it's nice for the young to have that short cycle because what's transpired for them is they get that 90 degree angle and they're 37 or 38 years old and this is the transforming planet and a lot of times in retrospect after they've had that that exact angle hit and they get a, a few years so they get a little distance they look back and say i had a second chance at life mm -hmm. And, and it's happened for a lot of them. So decisions that they made early when they didn't really have the awareness that you have after you've been through the mill a few times over your first 35 years or whatever, um, you get a chance to go back and make another um, set of decisions with more awareness because circumstances just move you from one place to another, whether you planned on it or not. So anyway, so okay. shall we just wrap this one up. Yep, that sounds good. I'm, I'll be right, I'm, just, I'm not even going anywhere. I'm just gonna pause it real quick or I'm gonna right. stop it.